Um, so hello learners, um, whether you're new or a regular learner on Academy. Um, this is Academy Refreshed. So basically uh, myself, so Dr. Chloe Faraha and my co-presenters and co-educators, Tigger Pritchard, who's up here for me, might not be for you, um, and David Graham, who's down here on my screen. Um, we're going to have a sort of chat about what Academy is, um, how you can sort of use our, you know, educative resources um, and just kind of, yeah, talk about what we hope for the future of Academy um, now that just after a year, we've reached the 5,000 learners mark already, which is amazing and wasn't expected um, at all. It was meant to be it's a little, nice little hobby that I might do. <laughs> And it became much bigger. Um, so maybe we could start with, I, I think maybe we'll start with who we are then. Um, so like I say, I'm Chloe. Um, I, we founded Academy about a year ago. Um, I have a PhD in stigma reduction, um, stigma reduction of mental health. And I do lots of things related to supporting or educating um, about autistic people. Um, I have many hats that one I do and I own snails that's a really important thing to know giant African land snails um, so Tigger do you want to sort of explain who you are okay so it's my real name I changed it over 22 23 years ago so it's now my passport and everything else not my birth name though I'll tell you that one day um, I've I've been a professional if I can use that term for over 30 years early years um, residential uh, schools, colleges, all working with awesomely gorgeous autistic individuals. And then realising that I loved that job, I felt like I belonged there, that it smelt right and everything else. Last year in a back garden, I suddenly realised that the reason I do what I do and love it so much and get it so much is because I am awesomely autistic. So I'm the baby here, really. Um, no, the age doesn't show that. And what I do with lots of different hats on as well, is I go out into the world where I can and educate individuals about the autistic experience and other areas like pathology, mind avoidance and so on and so forth. I'm still learning, learning so much, which is gorgeous and I love it. And um, as Chloe has snails, I have the incredible Mrs. Pebbles, which some of you may know about and is becoming a, a famous internet personality in her own right, which is really gorgeous. So yeah, hi. And David? I'm David Gray Hammond, and uh, I've only been really doing advocacy stuff properly for a little over a year. Um, but I've known I was autistic. Well, I guess we've kind of always known, but I wasn't diagnosed till I was 26. Um, I, I was a forensic scientist. Um, my dissertation was on the use of electromagnetic induction systems for the uh, detection of burnt and cremated human remains. Um, but that was way too depressing. Um, so um, after some really difficult years, which anyone who's watched my live streams with Academy will have a great deal of insight into these days. Um, after those difficult years, I was diagnosed autistic. I'd long story short i discovered the autistic community and i now write and advocate about autism addiction mental health uh sexuality specifically asexuality um and uh just well-being topics in general um i'm hoping to write a book we'll see how that goes um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited to uh, have taken on this new mantle now as a presenter at Academy. And we've done this because, like I said, Academy grew much more than I uh, even thought or anticipated. Um, it hadn't crossed my mind. Um, and so now we've got a number of uh, further volunteers as well who work in the background to help me keep Academy running um on a daily basis and we're going to hopefully just keep growing and, and finding more autistic educators from all sorts of backgrounds so that's a, almost a call out um well it is a call out it's a call out to any autistic 
people who potentially have a way of educating other people about autistic experience. And particularly, we would love, love to hear from um, autistic people of colour, um, autistic people with other disabilities of any description, uh, autistic people who are non-speaking um, and just really diversify how we educate and what we educate on. So that would be fantastic. Um, I guess in terms of for people who are new, what is Academy? So we've kind of introduced ourselves and it's like, but what is Academy? I mean, I've got my gump about what I think Academy is and when I set it up, but it will actually mean things to different people. It means something different to different people. So when I you know, start my sessions or my lives, I will say, you know, we are Academy and we are an educative platform where we educate about autistic experience from only autistic people. So any learner can come. The learners don't have to be autistic themselves, but we will only have autistic people doing the educating and the presenting and the speaking. Um, but what about for you both? So if I start with David first, um, what did Academy or what does Academy mean to you? I mean, Academy means a lot to me. Um... And, and I guess from where I'm sat, it's a, it's an accessible platform that provides a podium to autistic experiences. It's, it's, it's one of the, sadly, still few places where you can come and you can learn about autism from autistic people. And... You know, like I said, sadly, there's only a few places that, that are really doing that, um, at least on this scale. Um, and I, I think that's what makes your academy so important, because every experience you hear on here comes right from the mouth of an autistic person or, you know, however they communicate, you know, um, it's for me or academy is is a is a lighthouse in a stormy sea of people speaking over autistics that's a nice sound bite <laughs> that, that was brilliant that was awesome and tigger an awful lot of really gorgeous stuff was said there and then i think i think at the end of the day that bit about being a lighthouse that was just brilliant lush yeah you've got the bit where you have Far too many people that think they know. Far too many people that relish um, going to all these different places, you know, schools, colleges, conferences, universities, wherever, spreading their knowledge. But their knowledge isn't, from what I look at it, the true knowledge, the most up-to-date knowledge, and it isn't from that incredible understanding of what it means to be awesomely autistic and that's where I think for me that's where the beacon of academy is is because you're accepted it's inclusive you can listen you have people come along in different parts of their journey in, in terms of understanding it's a place to learn for me a desperately so a place to be re-educated from my viewpoint as well seeing as my 30 years plus has been you know with a a lot of different degrees of training and understanding it's changed a lot in the past two or three years so academy for me yeah it's that lighthouse i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of steal it a bit david sorry <laughs> it's that kind of lighthouse that kind of it's where you know if you go there, I don't know. I don't know what the word is to use. It's, it's kind of like it's safe, but it's kind of like it's accepting. It's kind of like you know, you know, it's going to be good. Does that make sense? So I, I watch stuff when I'm not involved with it. I listen to stuff. I learn. I share it with lots of other people. And I think the beauty of it is, is you're not. <clears throat> excuse me. You're not going to get a. I don't know if the term is is tainted viewpoint, or I, I can't think of the correct thing to say. But I know I'm going to get it from. The mouth of an awesomely autistic gorgeous individual and there's and, and that to me is just true and there's there's something about academy that i find true and i've got to add as well to me it smells right it smells right and that that's just me because i smell everything it smells totally right but i also will say on a personal level um you know since realizing there's so many others new for decades before me that i'm also autistic it's become a place that has supported is now supporting my life is now supporting my mental health if i can say that as well it's a place of acceptance a place of understanding it's a place where i can go and i feel and i belong 
And that I think is is just incredible. So you've got all that in just one area. You've got the education, you've got the acceptance bit, the inclusion, the learning, and the fact that, you know, I've I've because of Academy, I've now got a new, you know, wealth of friends, um, which I hope to meet face to face one day, uh, online that are so supportive and so encouraging. But it's just that it, you know, sorry, Academy to me, if, if you're going to have the, the lighthouse bit, I'm going to say Academy to me just smells right. If that's two beautiful that. sound bites then. <laughs> and there's two things there. So with David, you explaining it, you know, kind of how you see the, the platform and, and what have you is that something I, I wanted from day one is that it's free. You know, it's, it's bringing down a lot of so we're not all going to be academics as autistic people speaking on academy that's not what it's about I don't want it to become just a certain type of autistic person coming on yes we do have a number of autistic academics but also what's part of that is we're bringing that academic work and research and understanding hopefully in an accessible way that people wouldn't get hold of otherwise or wouldn't necessarily come across or maybe wouldn't even necessarily be able to understand because of the jargon that gets used in the literature and things like that so I wanted that too I wanted it to be about lived experience and the voices but making sure people understand it and making sure that means it's free to get that because I think education should be free with our little caveat which that we also want to be able to pay the autistic speakers so none of us on academy make any money there's we don't collect money from anywhere to to um, run academy but I've always wanted to pay the speakers and so we do request um, small donations of a pound if anyone is is willing to donate a pound and because of that we've been able to, to pay all our speakers um, a few of them have declined and said please use it to pay another speaker um, and, and, and things which has been fantastic but we have had so many speakers on so obviously if you think about it we've had at least one every Saturday um, for a year sometimes two sometimes three sometimes four and we've because of the donations from our lovely learners been able to pay all of them um, but really importantly you don't have to you know it will always be free um, and so people just sharing our content to make sure that people really are starting to understand autistic experience from mm. the inside out. That's really the biggest thing for us. Um, and so people's participation can just be listening, watching. You can engage in, in whatever way. Um, you know, every way is welcome in terms of engaging with Academy. And then what you said, Tigger, which was about how people can come and then learn or relearn and all this kind of thing and importantly although I'm an autistic person and I relatively speaking understand my autistic experience I'm always going to be learning um, and that I know the different narratives around autistic experience and I talk to support engage with autistic people every day um, you know I don't I try not to engage with um, non-autistic people as much as possible because I just like being around uh, my people kind of thing um but because of i even though all those things that i am autistic i understand the different narratives i understand the literature and i support autistic people in different capacities i know i don't know everything and that's why initially it was kind of like we need to find more autistic voices you know when i was somebody in the comment section one of the learners said really want to learn is there a link between addiction and autistic experience and that's when i was like I don't know I don't know enough about that I'm not going to pretend to so then I went and did a little hunt and I found David Gray Hammond so you know it's these kinds of things that exactly and so it's just knowing that you don't or we can't possibly know everything I think is a really good place to start from regardless of who you are whether you're an autistic academic we have to know that we don't know everything I think so. the really nice thing though is that yeah we don't know everything but everyone here gets to still participate in the conversation as they learn. It's not a question of sit and be talked at. Everyone is a part of the conversation. They can come forward with questions. They can make comments and they can be part of that conversation while still learning about a new topic. So in terms of what Academy does, um, as a standard, we have a session that we stream 
live. It might be a pre-record dependent on the autistic person's needs. But on a Saturday, um, we will stream at least for an hour on a topic. Um, and so that is a really great space for learners to be in the comment section and you know, have a conversation with one another while the talk is going on potentially, or ask questions of that autistic person so we can actually have that discussion. And I've seen some lovely friendships among people who've never met in that comment section as well. So that's a nice thing that I didn't think about that Academy could potentially be, which is bringing people together. I just saw it as that education, but it's more, it's become more than that. Um, so in terms of, I just wanted to show people, um, particularly new or old learner, um, as in they've been with us for a while, um, or they have only just found us. Um, so can you see my screen okay? Yes. So in case you didn't know, Academy has a website. Now it doesn't get updated all that often because a lot of the things that we do are on Facebook, um, but it does mean that you can find things like actually, if you want some training, did you know that Academy um, actually offers training of all sorts. Um, we would really love to get some new training up here soon as well. So, you know, it's always getting updated. So there's ways to look here for, I, I won't scroll too quickly. Um, you know, if you're interested in training, um, but potentially what I'll go to is our ethos. So why we started and what it meant when we started. Now it says it's draft and these are our guiding principles and it's subject to review because we might learn something new that means that our ethos needs updating. But ultimately, what it is about or um, what guides the principles of Academy is gentle educating. Um, because a lot of people are coming to understand autistic experience from such different standpoints. Some people may know lots and lots about autistic experience and actually they've got a really good grasp on all the narratives and all that kind of thing so they're just coming to maybe keep up with it or something along those lines but maybe you really don't know much about autism at all and you know you're coming into a space that's full of autistic people and some of us really do have um, some key things that are important for us like language use and things like that but ultimately whatever standpoint that person is coming from we want to gently educate. So we will inform people about the language, for instance, that's preferred by our community, um, but it's not about sort of forcing a narrative on people. We educate and then you hopefully will take that education and do something great with it. Um, but that's all we can do is do the education part. So one of our guiding um, ethos principles is, is respect, um, respecting, particularly with the autistic community, we are so, so diverse, um, so much intersectionality in terms of gender and ethnicity and age and disability. Um, so really respecting all that intersectionality is really, really important. Um, and so respecting also our modes of communication that sometimes um, asking a question of an autistic person who's delivering the talk um, might cause that person some distress or potentially means that you'll get a very honest answer and being okay with that sitting with that and realizing that's just autistic communication and it's um, just being honest and um, so I'm not going to read these all in detail but you know we talk here as well about our guiding principle of language um, which is that as a platform um, we do advocate identity first language so we are autistic people um, we are a people we're a culture and a community um, and so we refer to ourselves in that way but again it's gentle ed educating so lots of people will Will come into um, Academy um, using language like person with autism and um, so just a bit of gentle education educating and then we'll focus on the actual topic at hand um, from our perspective anyway and you're welcome to have a look at any of our um, discussions on language we are very much about depathologizing autistic experience so that's very much our standpoint so any of the topics that we will be talking about if we do use pathologizing language it's usually as a mode of educating you about that pathologizing language or pathologizing narrative but we largely um, as educators here um, do not see autistic experience as uh, disorder or disease or anything like that so you won't hear us necessarily talking about autism symptoms for instance because we don't think of it that way um, 
last one or last couple of one is intersectionality. So we're very, very, like I said, aware of such diversity in our autistic population um, and I've already mentioned that we are particularly interested to hear from autistic people who would like to come and educate from all those different backgrounds um, that intersect in our community. Already mentioned about ge gentle educating that for us our job is to educate but we are not here to enforce narratives um, and so we just want to be ultimately hopefully positive role models where we lead by example um, and you either take that example or you don't um, but there's you know there's nothing more we can do other than than educate so that's the website um, there are some things here that might be quite useful for people to know that exist on here um, so under um, books articles and resources this is probably the only other key thing that people might find useful on the website so I'm on here um, it doesn't get updated lots but it tends to be as we go along, if a speaker has a particular paper, book or something that would be really useful for people to know about. So, for instance, this is a, a very recent paper um, by uh, Kieran Rose, who's been on, who's the um, autistic advocate. Um, and it was a fantastic paper on autistic masking from autistic perspective um, and the reason that's key is because it's really been misunderstood in the literature in in a very different way to how autistic people feel we experience masking um, so you've got some things here you know links to things about sexuality and relationships in relation relation to being autistic um, but also quite importantly so I'll skim down you have oh so if you're a student for instance there's universal sorry, University Reasonable Adjustments document. So that can be downloaded. I created um, for myself when I was at university, but it's very useful for other people. This one is usually what we get asked for the most, which is um, the unofficial autistic checklist that was written by Samantha Craft. That's the original blog, but there's also a downloadable checklist that might be really useful. And particularly if you're new to understanding that you're autistic, um, so you're a late discovered autistic, that might be quite useful. Um, and then there's some links to the so-called official ones, which are not necessarily that helpful because they're a bit, well, they're very male biased, but they, they exist and they're there. So this is just a list of, you know, good books and articles and things like that. Even though you're educators, did you know there was a website? <laughs> I did know there was a website. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, did I? Definitely. Um, and then very briefly, how you can actually use our pack page, um, which I know sounds maybe a bit silly. Now, lives, you should hopefully just get um, a little uh, pop up notification when we go live. But we do also tend to list the lives unless they're impromptu, which they don't tend to be. I'm very organized. Um, so under events. So, for instance, if you want to see what we've got coming up to make sure you don't miss something. Um, so, for instance, uh, here you've got a list of all the upcoming um, talks that we have with autistic people um, and this is conference that we have or had depending on when you watch this video um, in May uh, 2021 um, so you can see what we've got coming up you can also find both under live and videos I, it probably makes more sense to go to videos because we do have some fantastic Tigger Tuesday videos um, that get released on a Tuesday <laughs> um, and here you can you can go back and you can see what we've we've done so if you've missed anything um, you can see the different topics that we have um, and so Tigger you forgot to explain that bit at the beginning which is also part of your Rollable Academy. Oh the Tigger Tuesdays well um, I suddenly found this thing called YouTube which I didn't know existed yeah I did um, but I last year I thought to myself <clears throat> excuse me i thought I, it, it's about it's about me discovering about me i think um is what the ticket tuesdays are i explore different facets that i'm learning about uh different bits of, of my gorgeous autistic brain problems i'm finding things i find difficult uh funny things um you may get the odd video or you have had the odd, odd, odd the ticket tuesday about washing machines and how a quiet washing machine can just transform my whole existence and also how smelling dog's paws can be the best thing ever um, but you've also got, you know, there's stuff there about my identity, about my growth, uh, my journey on understanding my awesome autistic brain, and also my interaction with those around me, and what we have to do to, to learn about each other, to communicate effectively with each other so that we, you know, people understand, 
you know, my sensory issues and so on. So really, yeah, it's, it's some of them are fun. Some of them are interesting. Some of them are really quite deep. Some of them are, are me burying my soul, which they never were supposed to be, but they are really sometimes me burying my soul. Um, and I don't know how to do it any other way. And um, I love them. So that's, that's, that's the Tigger Tuesdays that are there. It Thanks. is. It's fantastic. Um, and so the other, more, other um, important tab for people is if you are autistic. So sorry, if you're non-autistic, uh, you can tune out for a second. But if you are autistic, we have a number of groups that you can join. So you've got um, if you're an autistic parent of autistic children, there's a group for you. Um, there's a low spoons, so a low energy group um, called Academy Animals. So that one, it's not so much of a peer group or you, it's not really somewhere you're going to go and um, be asked for support or help or that you can do that either. It's more a place where if you just haven't got the spoons, but you really want to look at cute animals, then you can just scroll through um, and it's fantastic for that. We do have an Academy social group um, and they do actually meet online uh, twice a week. So you can actually hang out with other autistic people in a very autistic friendly way. So if you are somebody who um, doesn't use mouth words or you don't use them as often, you can use the chat box. You don't have to have the microphone or the camera on. So very, very friendly space to be in. Um, we also have Academy Arts. So if you're an artist or just really appreciate art, you're welcome to come in there too. And um, there's another um, number of other listed um, ones here but these are uh, uh, because it's on my personal page <laughs> um, so there's other groups there as well um, I think the only other one I've got under here is services so that's just if you wanted links to training and potential consultations and those are going to be growing and building and then other than that you just get fantastic posts um, we don't post too often um, because for lots of reasons we are autistic we know that a number of the people who are going to be seeing their newsfeed are autistic and and sometimes it can be a bit overwhelming to get multiple posts from pages so I do um, actively try to avoid having too many posts that we will put out um, and we will be doing refresh or academy or flashback or academies where we'll play some of the videos from um, earlier in the year as well in case people miss them um, so the other things to know about is that if it's easier for you uh, the videos from academy will also be up late uh, uploaded to our youtube channel um, just makes it a little bit easier and some people don't always use facebook um, we do have a twitter that we don't use too much at the moment but we're hoping to build that and we do have an instagram so that's basically how to use it uh, perhaps we could talk about potential plans for the future of Academy. So I don't know if you two have any ideas about where you would like or what where you would like Academy to go or what it could potentially end up doing. Well I think you already have an idea of of my opinions on this. I would really like to see Academy spread out into multiple media platforms, you know, so writing, speaking, videos, uh hell, I could probably write some music. I play guitar. Um, you know, we could, I think there's a lot of different things we can have fun with because, you know, the, the autistic community is so diverse in what they engage with and how they understand the world. I think it's important that as, as our academy develops, we offer stuff on just to, on, in, in the spirit of that diversity you know, because perhaps not everyone wants to sit and listen to a live stream for an hour, you know, but perhaps there's another way we can reach those people, you know, and, and so, I, I mean, my favourite one at the moment is I really want Academy to, to do some book writing, um, but, you know, as we, as we know, writing is sort of my jam, um, it's, it's, it's how I unwind, it's, it's, it's always been a, a bit of a running joke, because my friends are like, David, do you ever stop writing i'm like well yeah but it's not really work to me because i love writing <laughs> you know so i think as especially as we bring more people on board as well with different talents you know it gives us the opportunity to really expand into all different kinds of media and and just reach so many more learners and I definitely think I'd like to do more little cartoons as well, because some of those yeah, did yeah. quite well, because you're quite right that not everybody wants to listen to us 
um, for an hour. Although I do recommend as well, you can just use this as a podcast. You don't have to look at our faces if you don't want to. Um, yeah. And but I do have little, you know, sort of three minute videos and um, six minute videos. So potentially you could do more of those would be great as well. What oh you- yeah, definitely. I, yeah, I've no. been looking at those and I really want to do some some of the little cartoony videos. I have no idea how to, but that's that's the beauty yeah, of being no, part no. of Academy. There are people here who know how to. Yes, and we will definitely try and give people those skills if they want them. Yeah, fantastic. I think the bit I like is, is yeah, I'd, I'd love, I'd, I, I would love to do that. I don't know how to do the anime stuff and it'd be so cool to do it. I've got some ideas about how um, my input should become a bit more you involve in other individuals that I know, individuals that I meet, and so on. But the bit I, 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 I think the bit about keeping it accessible is really important. And I just want to, I, I see Academy. It's almost like you know, there's somewhere to go where you can trust it. And it's not that, you know, it's not that, I'm, I'm going to say it is, I'm sorry, you can go online, and you can buy the, the, you know, the autism awareness course at so many thousand pounds for a three hour, you know, little snippet. And it's completely out of date and completely wrong. And that's where I think Academy has strengths is because you've got autistic led educators, individuals, awesome human beings who are saying this is what it is with up-to-date knowledge and learning and refreshing themselves as well. And that's what I love to see. But I, w- I would, you know, w- there are going to be people out there, the musicians, that are artists, that are actors, um, that are uh, animationists, is that a word, yeah? And it would be so cool to have those people on board because then boom, we're showing the awesomeness of the autistic experience as well. And I think that, you know, what I'd, I'd love to see, um, you know, that, that you don't look autistic. Yeah, I'd love to see that kind of disappear because of what Academy does. Does that make sense? So you've got yeah. a lot of experience with individuals and people will just go, wow, you're really talented. None of this, you don't look autistic because you're doing this, because you're doing that. It's just accepting somebody for being awesome, amazing, superb in whatever, you know, we can use that art form they come across with. So no, I'd, I'd like to see as, you know, there's other pages you've started to, you know, you start the other groups, you started with the, the artists and the acting and so on. That, that bit really interests me as well, because that's just an awesome diversity. One thing I one thing I would really like to see is, uh, and I don't know, Chloe, maybe you have an idea of how this would work, but if we could start, if we could like write some big courses, you know, that like you know offer like professional diplomas, continual professional development stuff that is recognised, mm. you know, in the grand scheme of education, and and like really offer those sorts of courses that and make them not just financially accessible, but autistically accessible to, well, to anyone, you know. Because and that's I, always going to be the plan, is to make it both, and I like that, what you said. So not only will we always endeavour to make things financially accessible, i.e., for, for a lot of people, that might mean free. Mm. Um, for a lot of people, that might mean you get to contribute a donation if you want to, you know, down to those individuals. But also, so not only um, uh, financially accessible, but like you say, accessible for the learner, whatever stage they're at, whatever neuro- neurological profile they have, trying to make it accessible. I think that's, yeah, we'll, we'll keep endeavouring to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and I I think that that is really the beauty of our academy. The end. <laughs> 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 um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, yeah, oh, it's so lovely, isn't it? <laughs> to to, but for me, it's 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 odd, I guess, because I put the thing together and spent all this time putting the website together and doing all the organising and things. And um, for me, it's the I've learned so much more as well um, in this last year because of all these different people that I've, you know, found and asked if they'll come on and talk about their interests, the thing that interests them. So I've learned loads. And I've just met so many amazing people as well. Um, and yeah, putting together, I do see it as that educative platform. To me, it's not a Facebook page. It's this space where different people are connecting with each other because that's my biggest thing and I I say this all the time that I think of of all the other um, things that I do the other peer groups that I hold that 
aren't necessarily part of academy or related to academy or my support program that I run with Annette I argue that it's not really about the education the education is important and I think the education is really important for the non-autistic people who come to the to to academy for instance but academy is not for them per se it is for you you non-autistic people who are watching this video I don't mean that in the sense of please don't come and learn and things but what I mean is it was built for autistic people as well they were more in mind it was to help them understand themselves better but what I think we're really giving is not that education part it's the fact that they get to chat to other autistic people in the comment section or that they can go to the academy groups and connect and belong with other autistic people it's it's a bit about belonging and I I said it in the the, the preamble bit we did earlier on it's that bit about um that last video I did which was I just want to be me yeah was the last kind of slide thing I dropped here I can and that to me is an incredible power that I've got from academy is when we're chatting to individuals when you're doing the evening talks and there's all the chats going on in the 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 boxes and so on and so forth it's just that I can sniff away at blue tack and all the rest of it and talk about dogs and you know and and just be me and I think that's an incredible strength of academy and that means you feel accepted, you feel yourself, which is just beautiful. Yeah, and, and to build on that, you know, I think one of the reasons that I love Academy so much was because, like, uh, you know, it's it's not just on Academy videos that I'm talking about autism all the time. Like, I'm, I'm talking about it all the time. It's, it's a running joke with my friends. It's really all I talk about. Um, but Academy, I... I came on Academy and people wanted to sit there for an hour or more and watch me, you know, fiddle with my stim toys and talk about things I'm passionate about. And suddenly there's a hundred people listening to me Mm. and, and suddenly I've gone from, do you know what? Like maybe, maybe I do have some value. Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and, and that was an incredible moment for me and, and Academy gave that to me. And I think, that's the wonderful thing about well, Academy is it's going to continue giving that to so many other autistic people. I really hope so, because like I say, there's there's a number of fantastic autistic people who I know will be in the comment section and things like that. Sometimes they don't necessarily comment um, and they are just as integral as the person who's doing the speaking. Every in- single one of you has value. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so yeah I still want people to keep coming and learning if they're not autistic but it is I want it to be that space for autistic people to learn about themselves and connect with other people and I think that if I if we keep that as well in mind for our ethos I think that's a really good guiding um beacon Mm. I'd also quite like to know if you're new to academy or if you're old to academy <laughs> as a learner you know what does academy mean to you would be really lovely to know um and also where would you like it to go um i think so if you're a learner where where should academy go what should we be doing um and what does it mean to you i think would be nice and from myself definitely and i know from both of you as well but thank you so much just it's just been amazing to be able to do what we've been doing. Thank you. It's it's been it's 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 lush to to me out there that the, the comments on the the stuff I put out to all those amazing speakers you've had and my brain's gone wow learning um, changing um, challenging thoughts and so on and so forth and yet feeling part of something awesome and having that 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 safe space area to be me is is gorgeous but an, um but as, as as david said you know I, I put a video up people talk and i'm like well okay i watch your stuff and looking at the comments within it but it's that bit about yeah it's it's and in these present times as well yeah everybody that 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 gets on and dips in and and you know connects with academy thank you thank you thank you we've got so much more to do and yet we need loads of ideas um but um thank you thank you so much i think that's a good one thank you yeah thank you you. it's really the the best words we can use right now 
So we'll see you in the comments section. Me and Steve. Definitely.